All right, thank you, Heike. Um, there are actually, our fusion cell conversation is still occurring right now. I can tell you that um, can, we are definitely seeing our highest months of cases for COVID-19 among our community providers. Also, we are seeing an, an uptake in our state facilities as well. So I'm gonna put that over here because it's gonna keep going off, I know that. Um, to, to give you an idea, I was trying to find, because I know we've gotten our, our slide today, I just haven't opened it yet. Um, so give me one second here so I can give you today's numbers. There you are. Okay, so today, it's loading, I apologize. So today we, at, through the start of the pandemic, we've had 437 cases with individuals that are accessing our waivers or case management in the community. We had 18 new cases today. For the month of September, we're at 157 cases. Our, in August, we had 97 cases reported. In July, we had 121. We still have five days of September to go. So um, nothing would make me sadder than to see that number hit 200. We also have over 124 providers impacted by COVID-19 through the entire pandemic, um, and we're adding new providers every day. So wanted to share that information with you because we are seeing our highest numbers in the community to date. Um, still, the bulk of the cases are occurring in both our group home and ISL settings. Uh, we are seeing, and I, and I greatly appreciate all of your reporting because it is really important that we get this information reported to us so that we know where, what we can do to help mitigate um, everything that, ever, do everything we can to help. But, and, and you guys are doing a great job on that reporting. Our deaths are still at 11. Um, we've had two deaths in the month of September. We are looking, we are monitoring hospitalization information at this point in time. And I know there's articles um, specifically in the Springfield area with concerns about uh, hospital bed capacity. So just keep all those things in mind. Remember, we do have that station MD tool. Please, please utilize that as a way to help folks access healthcare um, responsibly and successfully and hopefully uh, limit some exposures out there in the community if we can do that. Because right now it is very much so um, the highest numbers we've seen to date. So wanted to start, unfortunately, with that information uh, and then uh, move on. Um, with that, I wanted to make sure that everybody understands the community testing has started again across the state. Every week we send out to you multiple times locations where that community testing is occurring. Those locations change every week and we send them as soon as we get them. All you have to do to access community testing, and this is for your employees, for your family, you can send this information to everybody, everybody. All you have to do is be a Missouri resident. So if they have community testing that we announced for you and it's in St. Charles and you live in Jefferson County and you wanna get your mom tested, Register online, go to St. Charles, get the test. But you don't get out of your car for these tests. They are drive-through testing sites. Um, the National Guard staff the testing sites, for those of you that have been to them, they are highly efficient and effective ways to get testing done, as long as you register online in advance. Now, they do take drive-up folks as well, but prefer register online in advance. Um, so please, Please share that information. If you can get it in your church bulletin, do that, especially if you see it in your county. I mean, I'm talking, give it to every person you know. Um, and I wanna make sure that we that, that was clear. You don't have to have any symptoms to get tested at a community testing event. There is no cost to you at a community yes. testing event. Um, you, like I said, registration is about the only thing they really want you to do ahead of time, and they will take drive up. They, they do take a certain number of drive ups. So, uh, we'll keep pushing those out to you. They change, like I said, every week. Uh, the state has two streams of community testing going on right now. So um, there's community testing happening every day, but our National Guard units do have travel days built in. So, and that's all evident on our community testing information. Kim. And that's actually accessible also. There's a link on DHS at the site right where they have to report to the positive cases. Right. Yeah, that information, we're trying to make it as accessible as yeah. possible and, and as in your face as we can. Um, I see a chat, since I, so we're kind of a lower group. Um, today it's just Kim and I, so I'm able to sit at my desk and look at the chat. 
Are there in-person doctor's appointments that are exempt from the trend reports during a pandemic? Um, and I think that's talking, okay, that's a question we're going to have to get back to you on, Sarah. I don't have the right people in the room to answer that question today, but yes, I get exempt. Um, and Erica could not hear and understand what Kim said, so she's going to have to come sit in the green chair instead of the pink chair. She's got her mask on and she was across the room. Um, and thanks for the plug for Station MD. We love it. Um, uh, how to access doctor releases from Station MD quicker than waiting for them to fax. Station MD has communicated they cannot email due to HIPAA. Thanks for that question. That's something we can we'll work on up. with them. Yep. We'll follow up and try to figure out a solution for that. So community testing, accessing the community, community numbers that we're seeing with COVID. Again, still we are having, I mean, I don't ever want to say that any um, out, I mean, that COVID anywhere is okay. I mean, the answer we're looking for is zero. But you guys are doing a phenomenal job. Um, we had a county health department call us a couple of weeks ago that had been working with one of our community providers. And um, I'm sure the provider's on because they say they always listen. I'm not going to say any more than that. But the county health department was deeply impressed at how smart our providers were, um, how they knew what to do, how, you know, really by the time they had called them, everything had really been taken mm -hmm. care of. And we still want you to use, you still need to communicate with those county health departments. It's very, very important. But there is a sense of relief for them when they find out that you guys know how to, con you're contact tracing your own folks. You, you know how to get the PPE, you know how to get the testing, and you know how important all those things are. Because uh, there's a lot going on in these communities right now. So everything that we can do, we should be doing to, to help across the system. So I, I greatly appreciate your, we're at 354 participants today, so I greatly uh, appreciate your diligence in staying a part of keeping up with all of this information. There are, um, what are transportation options for people that don't have a provider that have been exposed and are showing symptoms or in a power wheelchair and do not have transportation to get tested? Uh, that's something that we can raise up. Um, I think that's going to continue to be a challenge. I, I don't see an easy solution to that question, but definitely something that we can raise up and talk through with folks. So um, next I want to talk about, uh, we are sending out every week a weekly message, and that goes out to the, it should go out to all the providers, all the case management folks. And Heike, can you pull that up real quick? I know we talked about pulling that up. Um, but the White House has kind of changed the threshold. So they've added five categories of thresholds now. And uh, your goal, obviously, is not to be red. Red's bad, dark green is good. But these are the thresholds the way the White House is looking at them to determine uh, what color your county is or your, your, your municipality is. And you guys will hear this in the paper occasionally. Um, you know, the state of Missouri is a red state right now. And we're a red state for our number of new cases per 100,000, which is that first line that we're showing there. That means we have greater than 100, and 100 cases per 100,000 residents in the state of Missouri right now. And actually, I think that number when we sent it out was 142 this week. Um, and then we even go down by county and we show by county what those cases are. And that information is, worse. the goal is to really be able to have, there is a public dashboard that will be available to you all hopefully on Monday. They're still working through some kinks so that you can see this specifically for your areas. And we will send that link out and then when we have another one of these calls in a couple of weeks, we will go through that with you a little bit to show you more how it works. But um, wanted you to understand that what red means, red means that you have more than 100 cases per 100,000 in the last seven days. Uh, for uh, positivity, that your seven-day positivity great rate is greater than 10%, that your seven-day death rate is greater than 2.1%. That is actually not something Missouri has. We have a very low death rate in this state, so that is accurate information when you hear that. Um, that's a good thing, uh, but it still hurts my heart to say having a low death rate is a good thing because I don't want to have a death rate at all for this. So. It's kind of a hard, it's a hard metric for me to talk about uh, and put in a color category. Um, seven days cases for the versus the prior seven day case change. So they look to see are, did you, two weeks ago, was your caseload higher than your caseload is today? If that's the case, you're red. But that's actually one of the areas that Missouri County by County is seeing some success in and we are, uh, and you'll be able to see that on the maps next week. 
Um, positivity rate, what is your percent change in your positivity rate? So did you go from 10.8% to 10.2%? So those are things that they're very granular things that they're looking at to help determine um, if you're a red, orange, yellow, light green, or dark green county. Um, again, death data. And then the final category is seven-day test per 100,000 population. And this is also an area that Missouri does tend to do really well in. We do have pockets of counties that are under testing, but it's very, very few. We do a great job of getting testing out there. And I can tell you what I hear is we still don't have enough testing, mm -hmm. even though we are successful in meeting these metrics. So I um, wanted to show that to you. Again, you're gonna, I wanted you to see these metrics first, and you're going to see a lot more about these coming from the state starting next week, hopefully on Monday. That, was the, that, that is currently the plan. And then we will go over that with you more in depth um, in a future call. I promise you that. So I wanted to show you that, um, and, and we will continue to push those messages out. We either do a Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon. It kind of depends on when we get the data and feel like that data is in a comfortable position. Um, I also got a question about, um, sorry, I can't take this right now. I have to decline this call. Um, I also got a question about what we are looking for whenever we put a county into a remote only status kind of wanted to see if we had a, a threshold list similar to what I just showed you off of what the White House is looking at. It's a great question. We do look at all of those things, although we have a um, higher, we allow for a higher level of case activity because we are, the activity that we're pushing is a very low risk activity. Um, In-person case, face-to-face man -face case management in a low risk situation, masks, all those kind of things. Um, I think the reason the person is asking me that question is they want to try to adopt something for their own agency. I will tell you that while we use that information, there's a lot of gray that goes into that as well. So, for example, St. Louis City could have gone to non-remote based on the numbers alone, but we look at the surrounding counties and what's happening in the surrounding counties. We look in the case of our borders. We look in the counties across the river. We also take into account just the density of the area. And so while the numbers tell one story, uh, the gut doesn't tell you the same story. And so we, we use a combination of those factors to make those decisions. And I think it's important, I mean, that's why we talk about how you have to be really dynamic as you make these decisions, because we're constantly learning new things, and we can make adjustments in what we're doing based on that. So wanted to kind of talk through that a little bit more, and I will respond to that email also, but I wanted to make sure that I kind of talk through that a little bit on this call as well. Uh, hi, Kate, can you go to the flu vaccine information? It is flu vaccination time, what? <laughs> um, I don't know how many uh, yard signs, that, you know, it's election season too, so you either see a get a free flu vaccine here or somebody's promoting some candidate yard sign. Uh, lots of free flu vaccination clinics across the state. Um, I know uh, lots of healthcare providers are really pushing it. Wanted to show you Health and Senior Services does have a website if you're trying to figure out where you can get your flu vaccine vaccination done. They have a vaccine finder on here. Um, also, there is a rolling thing on the Department of Mental Health website that you can access as well. Uh, so if you just go into the Department of Mental Health website, because that's where you know to go, go there on our homepage. There's something scrolling across the top that will take you to this page. Hike has also posted it in the chat. Again, another one of those things you can share with everybody you know. It is time to get your flu shot. This is the best time. Uh, we had some conversations with our own state staff yesterday about flu vaccines. Uh, one of the questions was, is there a preferred place to get the vaccine? I prefer it to be free. That's how I pick. But um, and fortunately for me, I get mine at work because the Department of Mental Health requires us um, in some positions to have a flu vaccination. So, but uh, that was really my answer, my kind of tongue-in-cheek answer to that question. Uh, just get it. Uh, the flu vaccine is it's not like the COVID vaccine where there's some rules that we've got to follow. That's not where we're at with the flu vaccine. So, um, also, I prefer to get it in the arm. So, those are my two. Free and in the arm is what I'm after. But just please help us uh, work through getting those flu vaccines. Uh, for all of our residents, please work with your staff. Identify flu clinics, clinics in your area if you can. Work with our families. Um, we know just based off of what we're seeing in the paper where our hospitals are already starting to see 
uh, more COVID patients and flu patients will start coming in soon, and they, the two of those together, it's just it's not a good place to be at. Um, hospitals, nursing homes, and et cetera are making the mandatory, why don't we? Uh, yes, I wish we could. We've not actually built that in. I mean, all of our individuals are, um, and on the DBH side, on our behavioral health side, we do make it mandatory. It, and let me talk through this, this is a great question, Julie. So we've talked about it on our side. The issue with the flu vaccine is you actually order it in January. So if you're going to make it mandatory, you've got to make sure that the supply is there. And we did not know in January when you make your order for flu vaccine that we needed to make an order for a mandatory. With that said, all of the people that we cover with Medicaid, it is free, it is available, you will have no problem accessing it, and then we're really, really, really pushing you to get all of your staff vaccinated, and then that is something we probably need to talk about as the system is making this mandatory for our staff and our residents. Um, there are struggles for us as a department. We are a department that has a mandatory flu vaccination. We have employees that still decline to do that, and historically our response to that is that, well, then you have to wear a mask all flu season, and those employees do that. Now uh, everybody wears a mask all the time, so <laughs> I don't, I, you know, um, it, the, the punishment we had there is not really the punishment we've got anymore, but that was a great question, Julie. Um, yeah, mandatory for employees. Oh, good. You liked my answer. Thank you. You didn't like my answer, but you understand my answer. So uh, definitely something we've talked about and looked into. So flu vaccines. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kim and Heike. If you can pull up the, um, the DHSS site that Kim wanted you to pull up. And I'm glad that she gets to talk about this and not me. Thanks, so, Yeah. Okay, so just real quick on testing, I wanted to remind everybody um, the community testing events that are going on that Val referenced are very important. We still within the division, though, have our designated mailbox. If you guys are still interested as a provider in doing either agency-wide testing of individuals and staff or ongoing um, sentinel testing, surveillance testing, please reach out to us and give us your contact information and we will do our best efforts to get you connected with a testing support agency which is our community health center. So that's still occurring, still available. Please take advantage of that if you're interested in need. What Heike has pulled up here for you, and we did reference this, so you have a direct link in the memorandum on reporting for positive individuals with COVID-19. DHSS did some revisions to streamline their electronic case reporting for COVID-19, that little purple box right there on the screen. The memorandum has the hyperlink that will take you right here to this site. When you go into this, you're asked to report, and for right now, I'm speaking only about reporting on individuals that are receiving DMHCD services. We're asking you when you become aware that someone is tested positive, that's a recipient of services, that you also, in addition to reporting in our Seymour EMT system, the event report, that you also go out to this link and again, it's hyperlinked in that memorandum for you. Report your information for that individual in here as well. The reason that that's so vitally important at the division level is because we work closely in partnership with DHSS to make sure that all of those fields that were in Appendix A, which was that additional questionnaire that you were having to provide information to the division on, is now embedded in this reporting. So you're reporting in two places now, here, in the EMT system. The information that we receive then from a direct feed from that reporting, reporting platform supports us within the division to know how then to follow up and support you and the individuals. So for example, if you indicate you're in need of PPE, our QERNs will be reaching out to you and making those connections. They're going to be communicating with you also on any other um, risk mitigation supports that you might need. Even for things, if, if, for example, if you're in need of thinking about alternative care sites, it just kind of lets us know where we need to focus our efforts, again, to support you. So please, please, please make sure that you're going out and providing that information in this site as well. All right. And I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, that is all we – oh, there's a question. Kim mentioned email the division. We've had someone ask for that email address. Can she announce it? Oh, the email address. Are you talking about for um, the testing, the community testing? Yes, we will get that provided to you. 
And I will go, actually right now I will go and get that pulled up real quick and send it in. If you're okay. Else. I don't really have much else to say, so we'll have Pika just, well, yes. you know what, we'll send it out and dig again for everybody. I yeah. don't have a problem doing that. Yeah, no. So we'll double, sorry, I just like put that on my list. Thanks. <laughs> But we'll send that back out and dig again because I don't want to keep you all. And yeah. um, I think we are good. I um, keep keep doing what you're doing. Uh, if you're a provider that's eligible for our state's CARES Act funding, please get those invoices turned into us. Um, take advantage of the testing if you need testing. If you're, I know uh, people are talking. The schools are using this phrase, and I know it applies to us too. So I'm going to leave with this. They're April tired and it's September. You know, our schools have been back for four weeks. Um, usually there's a lot of energy and they are really, really getting tired. And I know we're tired too and we keep pushing that. We just said that looking at our numbers, we're April tired right now as well. Uh, we're seeing numbers bigger than we saw in April. And you guys are seeing numbers that you've never seen before. So I know it's hard for our employees to do all the things we need them to do, and if I could give them all a hug and a mask and tell them you are doing the right thing, I would. But we employ so many people across this, this great state, I can't. So just please, please, please keep telling, telling everybody what they're doing is right, even whenever I know they hear some places that it's not. So keep up the good work. Uh, get a flu shot, wear your mask, wash your hands, you know, the standard drill. Thank you guys for what you do. We'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Bye.